Hey friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk. I have an interesting uh, paleontological uh, discovery to share with you. It's uh, a tiny little marsupial mouse-like critter that was found well above the Arctic Circle. It lived about 69 million years ago, so it places it towards the end of, the, of when dinosaurs dominated the planet. And it was found in a location that would be equivalent to the Svalbard uh, archipelago uh, region of today's planet. And so scientists found minuscule teeth and a jawbone came, uh, that basically was protruding out of a side of a steep riverbank in Alaska. And you go up to the north slope of Alaska, especially the Colville River uh, region, it is a treasure trove of uh, paleontological finds that uh, paleontologists are always excavating out. So the animal has been given the scientific name uh, Unu, Unu Okunus Hutchesoni. And Unu Ok means night, which is a reference to you know this animal spending a lot of the year in twilight conditions. And uh, Miss, M-Y-S, is Greek for mouse. So basically, uh, Unu, Unu Okunus basically is night mouse. And then Hutchesoni is, uh, you know, for Hutchison. We don't think about finding tiny marsupials at 85 degrees north latitude, uh, said uh, Jaylene uh, Eberly, who's the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the University of Colorado in Boulder, at Boulder Museum of Natural History, and she was one of the discoverer, discoverers of this species. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, the teeth and bones have been popping out of the ground in the Colville River, north slope of Alaska. As I said, Colville River is just, you know, they've, they've found like major, like I think the Plodocus up there and other uh, such uh, uh, dinosaurs. It's just an amazing place that they find all these things. And just, just so you have an idea, the north slope of Alaska when you actually look at the geology of it, it's made up of a bunch of little micro uh, tectonic plates that all kind of coalesce together. Very, you know, very tiny little plates that, you know, the action of the plate tectonics brings these little pieces together and they kind of jam into each other and they create, uh, create this, uh, this area, the North Slope. So it's kind of geologically a little unstable, but it, it's just a coalition of all these, uh, coalescing, excuse me, of all these little micro plates. When you get on the other side of Attigan Pass, which is uh, basically the northernmost reaches of the Rocky Mountain range, you still get on the other uh, side of Attigan Pass and going past the latitude of Anaktuvik Pass, you see as you're driving towards the Arctic Ocean, it's just one very gradual downhill to the uh, ocean and, you, and it's just made up of all these little plates that come together uh, you'll see flat uh, areas and you see little like hills and uh, other features that are indicative of these plates uh, meeting together paleontologist patrick uh, druckenmiller of the university of alaska fairbanks uh excellent paleontologist uh curator of the uh, museum that's on campus and his colleagues have been excavating dinosaurs from the riverbanks for years, very long time. It's been at least uh, 30, 40, 50 years of ongoing excavations up there. Over time, uh, uh, Druckenmiller uh, and his team have learned how to recognize thin sediment layers, basically less than 10 centimeters or four inches in th uh, thickness, that were deposited at the base of small Cretaceous streams. These layers tend to hold small rare fossils like mammal teeth and fish bones. And once the researchers find particular layers, Druckenmiller said they shovel them out wholesale into buckets. The clay and dirt are then washed out and the paleontologists, along with students and research assistants, uh, students and research assistants do most of the work, uh, then they sift through all that stuff there and then look at any chunky grains, if you will, that could be uh, fossils. And they look at them under the microscope. It's, it's hard, uh, hard work, backbreaking, and you're also donating lots of blood to the mosquitoes. 
Now back to Dr. Eberle, she said most of the mammal teeth max out at about 1.5 millimeters, which is quite small. That's in length. So Eberle and her uh, associates uh, from several universities have found about 70 of U. Hutchinsoni teeth and the lower jawbone. That is enough to make an estimate of the size of the animal and a guess at its diet. If you look at the teeth, you look at the features, cusps, uh, ridges, that kind of stuff, you can ascertain whether it was herbivorous, carnivorous, insect, insectivorous, what have you. And the mammal is part of a group called the Metatheria, this is, which includes today's marsupials. It weighed approximately about 27, 28 grams, which is about an ounce dry weight. And that would be equivalent to, say, a, a small shrew that you might find uh, nowadays. The sharp teeth suggest that it may have feasted upon insects. So in this regard, and also being as marsupial, the researchers suspect that this animal might have been behaving a bit like the way uh, possums do today. Now, U. Hutchesoni is the northernmost of its uh, type of specimen in the family Pediomyidae. Previously, the most northern site with a family where this family of mammals was found was in northern Alberta, Canada. Today, the excavation site lies at about 70 degrees north latitude. In the Cretaceous period, given the movement of the continents, tectonics, right, it would have been between 80 and 85 degrees. When you look at the plates that the micro plates that make up the Alaska's North Slope, they all tended to move from regions that were further north and they moved southward to coalesce into what's basically called the North Slope of Alaska. So that's basically what she's getting at here and, and this is in agreement with what geologists know. So if, if this animal lived between 80 and 85 degrees north latitude, then the night mouse would have spent about 120 days out of every year in 24-hour darkness. Okay. The climate 69 million years ago was warmer than today. And so the animal's habitat would probably average around 43 degrees Fahrenheit or 6 degrees Celsius. It would have been below freezing in winter, but not unbearable. It might have been, a little, and of course, a little cooler in the summer being that far north. It could have easily lived in underground burrows as an adaptation to uh, cold weather. You uh, even get below the snow layer, it's considerably warmer than uh, the ambient air temperature right at the interface of the air and the snow. Most likely, conif uh, coniferous forests uh, were uh, found. And it might have been uh, uh, utilized by duckbill uh, dinosaurs uh, and then smaller relatives of uh, T. rex that were, of course, also uh, meat eaters. So, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Miller basically says that uh, this is a cool, pretty cool discovery. Any discovery is, a, is exciting, of course. Unfortunately, this mammal did not outlast the dinosaurs, like some of the other smaller mammals of the Cretaceous. Other mammals found in the same sediment are from groups that did survive. This is according to Dr. Everly. See, she goes on to state, folks have hypothesized that being small and having the ability to potentially hide underground when a big meteorite comes along would have pre-adapted pre these guys to survival. Apparently not for these guys. So um, they did not uh, outlast the dinosaurs, but like everything else, that is how things proceed evolutionary-wise. This research was published in the Journal of Systematic Paleontology. So um, a very interesting, exciting find, and I wanted to share that with you. Thank you for your time.